Hello friends, in this video we will be synthesizing triphenyl methanol via the Grignard reaction. Triphenyl methanol synthesis from benzophenone and phenyl magnesium bromide is a common experiment for learning the Grignard reaction. Triphenyl methanol is used in the production of commercially useful triaryl methane dyes. For this experiment, we will need 1.35 grams of magnesium turnings, 1 speck of iodine crystal, 6 milliliters of dry bromobenzene, 12 grams of benzophenone, 30 milliliters of 10% sulfuric acid, 50 milliliters of sodium dried and hydrous diethyl ether, and ethanol for recrystallization. A point to note is that all equipments and chemicals used in the preparation of Grignard reagent should be perfectly dry with no water molecules as it will interfere with the reaction and the reaction won't take place. Let's get started. A 100 milliliter perfectly dry round bottom flask is clamped on a hot plate stirrer with a stirring bar inside. Then 1.5 grams of magnesium metal turnings was added to it. The magnesium metal turnings must be fresh as possible and by freshness I mean no oxide or carbonate covering on top. Next, 8 milliliters of sodium dried and hydrous diethyl ether was added to the flask. A tiny speck of iodine crystal was added to the flask. The iodine will help remove the passivating oxide layer over the magnesium turnings. Now a three-way Claisen adapter is connected on the round bottom flask and in one of the ends a dim broth condenser was attached and on the other side a pressure equalizing addition funnel was attached. Now a mixture of 6 ml of dry bromobenzene in 25 ml and hydrous diethyl ether was added to the addition funnel. Always make sure the stopcock is closed before adding the solution. With the steering turned on, bromobenzene in ether solution was slowly dripped into the flask. If you don't see the reaction commencing on its own, you can gently warm the contents of the flask. Always keep a bowl of cold water or ice just in case if you see the reaction goes out of control and ether starts to boil away. In our case, a gentle heating was applied and when the reaction started to commence, we stopped heating as this is an exothermic reaction and the heat of the reaction itself can carry the reaction forward. You can see that the reaction has commenced by the disappearance of the color of the iodine and appearance of turbidity. You can also see the magnesium turnings getting slowly reduced as it goes into the solution. What's happening here is the formation of phenyl magnesium bromide which is our Grignard reagent. After all the bromobenzene have been added, reflex the mixture for another 15 minutes for getting it into completion. Allow the flask to cool down. It will just cool down on its own when reaction comes to a stop. Now 12 grams of benzophenone dissolved in 25 milliliters of anhydrous ether was added to the addition funnel. Slowly add the benzophenone solution to the phenyl magnesium bromide. As you can see some amount of magnesium turnings remained unreacted, that's okay. On adding the benzophenone, you see the solution turns to bright pink color. This is due to the formation of triphenyl methoxy anion. After adding more than half of the benzophenone solution, you will see the development of a crystalline precipitate. The triphenyl methoxy anion becomes so much saturated in ether that it comes out of the solution. It comes in such a voluminous amount that even the steering bar gets entrapped in it and the steering stops. This is what we see after the addition of complete benzophenone. Since it became very late, I tightly sealed the flask and went to sleep. You can cool down the flask and continue the experiment if you have time. The next day morning I started again. 30 ml of 10% sulfuric acid solution was prepared by dissolving 3 ml of concentrated 98.6% sulfuric acid in 27 ml of distilled water. Now a large 2000 ml beaker was taken which was filled with some crushed Dyson water and the 30 ml of the 10% sulfuric acid. With steering turned on, the contents of the flask was transferred to the acidified solution. This completes the formation of triphenyl methanol product. Some amount of ether was added and all the solids dissolved. Our desired product dissolves in the ether and all the magnesium salts dissolve in the aqueous layer. 
the addition of the contents of the flask to the sulfuric acid in ice is exothermic and sufficient cooling was provided to prevent the ether from boiling the upcoming steps are the extraction and purification of the triphenyl methanol the contents of the large beaker was poured into a 250 ml separatory funnel the aqueous layer comes below and the ether layer on top the bottom aqueous layer was separated and the ether layer was collected in a clean flask aqueous layer was rinsed with some ether and the ether was transferred to the previous ether layer the aqueous solution was then discarded A simple distillation was quickly set up to remove the maximum ether from the flask. This ether was later stored in a separate container labeled solvent ether which could be used in various other organic synthesis as a solvent. Once all the ether gets distilled over, around 30 ml of distilled water was added to the reaction flask and a steam distillation was carried out. This helps to remove any unchanged reactants or diphenyl if it was formed. Finally the crude product was filtered. It had a distinct yellow color. It was then recrystallized from hot 96% ethyl alcohol. On cooling, white crystalline precipitate of triphenyl methanol was obtained. The product was then vacuum filtered and dried. The dried product weighed 10.1 g. The theoretical yield was 15.6 g, so the percentage yield was 64%. The melting point con was confirmed using a Thiel's tube and it was around 160 degree to 163 degree celsius which is roughly the melting point of triphenyl methanol so that's all in this video hope you have enjoyed my video these are all my patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that i am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos you can also support me via patreon or paypal the links of both of them are given in the description So once again thank you for watching do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button for notifications and i will see you in the next video